Airtable just released a new feature around proofing documents. And if you're in a marketing or operations role and you find yourself constantly comparing images or documents to one another, leaving comments back and forth and having a publishing or proofing flow, you're gonna find this really useful. Before we dive in and show you what it looks like inside of Airtable, there's two reasons I think a lot of companies are going to really appreciate the way this feature is rolling out. Number one is that this feature is rolling out to the business and enterprise scale plan. So we've seen a lot of feature development recently going towards enterprise scale, but this is going to be made more accessible because it's available to business plan users as well. And number two is that the proofing process is very collaborative. Oftentimes you're working with external clients, and so Airtable's making this feature available for comment-only users. That means you don't have to pay for full licenses for all of your individual users. That would be cost prohibitive. So I'm really glad that Airtable took that into consideration before rolling this out. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out in Airtable. The use case we're gonna be talking about initially is around YouTube thumbnails, because for our company, we make YouTube videos as part of what we do. And so we have a thumbnail artist where we collaborate back and forth. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add a new attachment field. And this can be either as part of an interface or here I am in a grid view but we'll add the attachment field and notice that there's a new format option here. So instead of just having files, we now see this new feature for versions. I'll call this thumbnail and we'll go ahead and create our field. So let's start by adding our first attachment. And we just do this as we normally would. I'm gonna browse on my computer and we'll attach an image and we'll upload this. And if I click on here, we can see this is now labeled with V1. So that's our first version of this image. And I can click to expand this and we can review this, which now takes us into this kind of review modal where most of the heavy lifting takes place. So if I get this from my editor, I might wanna start calling out a few different items, like maybe the placement of where this is, I wanna make a change. So I'm going to leave a comment and this is going to take into consideration the context. I have this rectangle here and this comment is now in the context of that actual change that we're making. We can also freehand if we want to, or we could add in a comment, we could click on the screen. And let's suggest that we reverse the orientation of this image. So now we have a couple of comments that are added for our thumbnail editor. Let's say that he goes back and makes the changes and is going to upload the second version of this image. So in this case, we click on the attachment and we're going to now upload this second version. We'll upload. And now you can see when we click, we've got a V1 and a V2, same thing. We can go ahead and review this. So by default, because we have a new version, we're going to be looking at that most recent version here. But here's where it gets pretty cool. We can click on the current version and we can compare this to a previous version. So now we actually have both versions side by side and there's a lot that we can do here. We can change the size on this. So if we want to see the new version a little bit larger, so we focus on there and we can reference at the same time, we can certainly do that. I can click on here and go back and forth and I can see the different comments that I've made. I can click on that rectangle and reference that again. And then I can click back and maybe we want to make some additional comments to the new version that we're on. So let's say I'm on the new version and I leave a comment here as well. This is now going to be tied to that version. So if I click on the other version, we see our initial two comments and we can go back and forth this way. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is if you're looking at the record view itself, you'll see this area to expand for the comments. These are just the standard record comments. And so what it's doing is it's actually taking those comments that we have about the proofing and it's inserting them into our main comments area. And this taps into things like notifications for users as well. Now, if I were to leave a comment in this area, it's not going to be tied to that specific annotation. Here, we're just leaving a more general kind of comment, but we can do that if we're talking about thumbnails and different things with our YouTube video. Maybe we're talking about the description of it. This is going to provide the high level of context. And then if we wanna see it individually on those items, we can click through and actually go to that specific version again. This is gonna take us back into the proofing UI. Let me show you real quickly what this looks like inside of an Airtable interface. So I can click our plus button and we'll add our thumbnails field here. And because this is versioned, we only are going to see that most current version here, but we can easily click in a single click that review to open up our proofing area. Now, before I get into an example with a PDF, I wanna show you one more cool feature and it's been a little bit buried here. So if we click up at the top under these more actions, we have the option to download with or without the annotations themselves. So I'm gonna download this with annotations. And then you can see I get a PDF file and it actually includes the annotations. It's got the rectangle I added, the comment, and it's actually embedded that inside of the PDF. 
Okay, so let's say instead of images, we wanted to upload some text documents, some PDFs. We'll upload the first one, and I'll go ahead and add the second one, and we'll upload it, and then we'll expand our proofing review area. So again, we see the most recent version, but let's compare this. So look at how cool this is. If we have two different PDF documents with text, it's going to automatically identify the differences in the text and color code that so we can easily see that on the screen. And not only do we have the text in that color highlighted on the screen, but we can click on it and reference that so that we could comment that specific change in the text. So I don't know if you're like me, but many of us that are business owners are already salivating at the mouth of, hey, could we eventually do redlining for contract changes in this in the future? Maybe so. I think right now that they're really focused on the marketing use case, but this is a really awesome feature if you're looking at different kinds of documents that aren't necessarily for marketing purposes. Now, when it comes to the pricing of this, remember that this feature is available both on the business and enterprise scale plans. The only particular part about this is that the attachment space is that same 100 gigabytes of attachments. So that's a lot of space, especially when you're talking about per base, but just something to keep in mind if you're using this feature heavily. But aside from the storage limits, Airtable says there's no hard limit on the number of different versions that you can have. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty pumped to use this in my own marketing flow. And I feel like they've been really generous here by putting this on the business plan and letting you use this with comment only users. If you have any questions about your own Airtable build, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30 minute consultations.